Hey there, everyone. Welcome back to another episode of the Moxie Coaching Podcast. It's Michelle. Before we get started, as always, thank you so much for being here. I greatly appreciate it. I'm having so much fun teaching how to integrate the tarot into your daily life and um, just creating this community. So thank you for giving me an opportunity to do that. Okay, we're going to start this week with the reading and then we'll move on to the rest of the episode. The last couple episodes um, have been a little heavy. I recognize that. So this week I want to focus on some positive things. And I'm thinking for the reading this week, what we're going to do is our three card pull. The first card is where we can find some positivity as a collective right now for this week. For this week of, what are we looking at? August 2nd through the 9th, I think, something like that. So where can we find some positivity? Let's focus on the positive, not Ignoring the negative, but just changing gears a little bit here, shifting things up a little bit. Next question is, or the next card is, how can we as individuals and as a collective be a contribution? What is it that we can be doing right now that contributes to the greater good? And then, as always, you know, let's keep it real. Something we need to know, remember, or be aware of this week, right? We don't want to stick our head in the sand, but we also don't want to go looking for trouble. (laughs) All right, so let's begin. The first card I pulled is the Ten of Pentacles, and that card is in relationship to where can we find some positivity right now? And this card is like handing you a platter of positivity in terms of um, a certain level of comfort. This card shows us or, or expresses a deep level of creature comforts, physical comforts, um, material comforts, material familial wealth and all of the advantage and all of the security that comes with that. So that's the energy that we can be pulling from this week. And it's sort of, if we shift the card from, you know, what it means to how we can apply it, what we can do from a practical perspective to take the advice of this card. Basically, it's telling us that this week it is time for you to take a deep breath, time to coast a little bit, time to enjoy a little bit. putting yourself inside of this card, there is a sense of ease and and almost like a sense of safety, a sense of insulation from the rest of, you know, the craziness that is outside of the gates of this familial wealth. So where can you find some positivity? Right here in this card and in taking its suggestion that we embrace the plenty that is available to us, we sit in that space of feeling plentiful and we just relax. We just, you know, put ourselves on autopilot. We, it's almost like this card is telling us to take a mini vacation. That's, that's 
in relationship to you know what we're trying to accomplish with this reading it's that vibe right it's that get away from it all escape for a little while um you know if you're not one of the people who just naturally happens to live in this place of you know familial wealth and security <laughs> imagine yourself in that space even if that means you're in the kiddie pool and you're getting KFC instead of, you know, your drinks delivered and sushi, put yourself in that space. Give yourself the opportunity this week to um, sort of revel in a sense of escape, revel in a sense of this is some break time for me, for my brain, for my heart, <laughs> for my ego, for everything. And I'm just going to put it all away and sort of, this is like permission to zone out, okay? So this is, this is for this week, not forever, but for this week, take your break, enjoy it, and revel in it. In terms of what we can do to be a contribution, we came up with the Queen of Pentacles. Queen of Pentacles is the, the queen of practicality in a lot of ways. She's the queen of financial things. She's the queen of um, material things, earthly things. She is the most grounded and... Um, Mm, I, I think of her as just very no-nonsense, but no-nonsense in a way that's different from the Queen of Swords. You know, the Queen of Swords no-nonsense is that intimidating, um, getting called up to the front of the class in front of the teacher feeling. The Queen of Pentacles no-nonsense is more... Um, I, I picture, you know, this woman who is incredibly authentic. She might even, she might have like dirt under her fingernails and her hair might be a little bit crazy because she is in this material world fully, okay? So that's the, that's who is available <laughs> to us to sort of channel or to riff off of to figure out how we can be a contribution this week and where we can put this energy to use right where we can embody this energy is in a couple places you can embody it in the business world if it's appropriate for you or you can embody it in the natural world and the physical, the material world. Because the pentacles span, right? They span business. They span making money. They span financial security and are all the way to the, the physical, the material, the mother earth part of our existence. So you can... <laughs> Somehow I just uh, alerted Alexa. She's talking to me. Sorry. Um, so she straddles that line. And whatever end of that spectrum you are on right now is where you can pick up the torch and run with it, right? Does it mean that you are using your queen of pentacles powers to help someone else? In the material world are you looking at um, helping someone with their business with their garden with um, anything that that you can do that is a contribution in the physical world and there certainly are plenty of places available right so we're being asked to embody this strong, grounded, considerate, um, 
queen of fertility is what some people will call her. So she's not the empress. She is not the earth mother. She's not uh, mother earth, but she's definitely right up there in terms of her connection to the material world. And she has a thing about helping others. So what better card could come up for us in this place of how can we be a contribution this week? And lastly, something we need to know or remember or be aware of coming up this week. Because while we do want to focus on the positive, no one likes to be blindsided. <laughs> so um, I'm glad we asked because the card that came up is the Wheel of Fortune. If you remember anything about the Wheel of Fortune, you remember that it is a card that is letting us know things are changing. The Wheel of Fortune is also the Wheel of Life and it goes around in circles. We have cycles in our life we have repetitive events. You could look at the Wheel of Fortune, if you're a really visual person, like a water wheel. And the water wheel is like a mill water wheel, you know, the one that the water falls into and it makes the wheel go around. Half of that wheel is submerged. We can't see it. If we were attached to it, we'd be struggling to breathe, to see, to experience life the way we really want to experience it. If we're on the top of the wheel, we're dry, we're clean, we're sunny, everything is peachy, right? If the wheel is turning clockwise, you're heading from your peachy position down eventually back into that water. But when you're in the water, eventually you're headed back up to that place of happiness and joy and, and positivity and whatnot. This card does not tell us what's happening. It's just telling us that we need to be aware that change is in the air. And that change is not something that we can predict, at least right now, based on just this one card. But that, that it is something that we need to be aware of. So it could be pointing to as a collective, meaning as a group, as a country, or as a, um, a tribe, or a citizenry, or whatever group you want to call it. Or we could look at it from the perspective of personal change. Because as an individual, you are part of the collective. So that is something that you'll have to take a look at for yourself this week and see, you know, hey, does this change uh, feel to me like it is something personal that's happening in my own life? Does it feel like a more global change. Um, my gut is that because this is a reading for the collective, that this is, this is more than likely simply a reflection of what has been going on. It's not feeling to me like it's a warning of anything big or tragic happening. Um, or any massive shift or any massive, massive change. It's more, or any one massive change or any one specific shift. To me, this card feels a lot more like, it's, as I said, it's just simply a reflection of the ongoing change, the constant um the constant shifts that we as individuals are having to go through these days that 
everything, you know, businesses are, are having to shift and change. People are shifting and changing. Um, organizations, schools, governments, um, everything is, not everything, but <laughs> that's a little dramatic, but um, so many things are being called into question and so many things are showing up as one more thing to add to the checklist of things we need to address. So I think that this has to do with more global, more large scale. And this time it, it actually kind of feels good. You know, I'm not getting a, a, a difficult vibe from the card at this time. So let's hope that, that my intuition is right, that maybe this week we're going to see some sort of positive change. Um, maybe we're going to see something in politics that surprises us or something in the news that, um, you know, shifts something in a positive way does not always mean just because it's the wheel of fortune that you know that you're shifting it that you're heading down under the water this card could be telling us hey you know yep you are underwater right now but keep your eyes open you're headed back up to the top of the wheel to wrap up the reading where we can find some positivity this week in the 10 of pentacles and in the stability and in the comfort and in the message from this card that it's okay to let her guard down, to step into mini vacation mode and just let everything else kind of fall away. What we can do to be a contribution is to embody some of this Queen of, Ener I'm sorry, Queen of Pentacles energy. This grounded, earth mother, kind, considerate, always pitching in to help, um, vibe, <laughs> energy. Um, she has a really strong sense of doing the right thing and a strong sense of duty. So we're being called this week to look at how we can embody this type of energy and what we can do with it. And then lastly, something we need to know, remember, or be aware of, the Wheel of Fortune. Things are changing. We are being a stand for things changing this week in some way, shape, or form for the better. Some sort of shift, some sort of, you know, click in the, what am I seeing? Um, Oh, what do they call those? The locks on your, my goodness, the locks on your locker when you were a kid in school and you can feel it click, click, click. That's what I am really hoping we're getting ready for, right? We're getting ready for the bearing to fall into place at one of those clicks that's actually a click higher <laughs> vibrationally than where we've been lately. All right, that is the reading for the collective for August 2nd through the 9th, 2022. I don't think we've talked on the podcast about the fact that I do digital course development for wellness practitioners in addition to coaching. And I thought that I would just take a moment to share with you a testimonial from my most recent client. Her ability to take what I needed to say and what I wanted to teach and create the product around it, create the transcripts around it, create all of the, the structure and the form to it was just amazing to witness. Um, there are a few people who can take someone else's ideas, intention, and direction 
and speak to it in their voice and to give it the flow that clients need. So often I talk to people who are experts in their subject matter, but who have no idea how to take that information and turn it into something they can share with other people and something that they can monetize. So please reach out to me if you have any questions. There's also additional information available for you on the Moxie Coaching website. I don't always know ahead of time, uh, meaning like weeks ahead of time, exactly what I'm going to be talking about in my next podcast episode. And that's because I try really, really hard to stay flexible for whatever might come up. This week, what came up was something that I just wanted to share with you because I feel like it has really helped me a lot. And I'm curious about whether it would help you. And if not, you know, just what you think about it. Okay, so this is the thing. I don't, I struggle with even how to begin to articulate this. Um, when it comes to a quote, higher power, right? When it comes to connecting with something and through that connection, making, no, through that connection, knowing ourselves better, knowing what is in our best interest, knowing or maybe intuiting which direction we should go on something, what feels right, what doesn't feel right, all of those things. So, you know, we could look at it from the perspective of just very, very rigidly um, opening one's self up during uh, meditation or opening oneself up during a tarot reading, you know, where you're trying to bring in very, very specific things. In this situation, I'm talking more about just looking for a connection, for higher guidance that feels authentic to me. So a little bit of context. I did not grow up religious. I was baptized Catholic and then not raised in the church. I went back to the church when my daughter was born and subsequently left the church because I was appalled at the behavior of some people. So for me to pray to Jesus just feels really inauthentic to me. It doesn't feel right. It, I have a bad taste in my mouth about, doesn't even matter. I have a bad taste in my mouth. <laughs> and while I absolutely love being in a Christian church, especially a big Catholic church, by myself, <laughs> I really, um, not so much with all the other people. So when I'm looking for higher guidance, I really, I don't, I don't look to God. I don't look to, to Jesus. Um, now angels, I know a lot of people are very, very connected to their angels, to other angels. Um, I know my coach is big on Archangel Michael, but to me, that's, I don't know, it's just tied into the religion thing and it doesn't work for me. And then we have spirit guides. Now that one, I really worked with. I really did. I worked with spirit guides for a long time. And I wanted to connect with my spirit guides. Um, even though I am a very analytical and logical person, who wouldn't want to know that, you know, there was like 
something hanging out with you, watching over you, taking care of you, providing guidance, uh, pointing you in the right direction. You know, now whether you took their advice is another thing, but who doesn't want that, right? So I did the spirit guide thing. I did a lot of meditation um, and I feel like I made some progress. I feel like um, there is one guide in particular that I'm connected to and I've worked on cultivating that relationship a little bit. And then it occurred to me that I might want to try connecting to my higher self. And it didn't even occur to me, you know, we all talk about our higher self. And this recommendation came inside of, oh, I think it was inside of um, some information about automatic writing. And the author of this book, and I'll share the book with you later if it turns out to be good. But the author of this book is talking about getting into the space that one needs to get into in order to be able to do some automatic writing, which is in the same space, you know, as our deep meditation, as our deep creativity, as a lot of other things. And one of the wet, you know, one of the avenues for achieving that was the higher self. You know, of course he said God, he said Jesus, he said whatever religious figure you want, the universe, Gaia, Whatever it is that you feel is something that will connect with you. And I had never thought about the higher self before. So I started playing with it. I see my higher self, or I see everyone's higher self, as, as a very wise, not omniscient, but very wise, energy being... And she looks just like me because I guess I'm not that imaginative. And this energetic force, this higher self, has been with me throughout all of my lifetimes. This higher self was there every time I was reborn to help me figure out what my next purpose was going to be, what I was going to try to accomplish with this next cycle in life. And so this higher self knows my history. It knows all of, it knows everything there is to know about me, about this life, I'm living right now and about every other life I have lived. So shoot, it seems to me that that's the one I need to be connecting with. And so that's what I started to do. And in my meditations, I started really working at opening myself up to inviting in my higher self, inviting in the wisdom, and I'm pretty darn practical and pretty uh, visual, so it's like, hey, how you doing? You know, we have a little conversation, um, and there's a, there's a relationship there. And unlike my spirit guides, that in my, the way it feels to me, they're more on a pedestal, and they're, <laughs> I look at them as more there to straighten me out if I do something dumb. The higher self, I look at as more of a partner in creating what needs to be created in order for me to accomplish what I'm supposed to accomplish in this lifetime. And since I did this, since I started this, and it's only been a few weeks, 
but I have noticed things shift. I have noticed I am less anxious. I am much more able to hear something and let it roll off my back. Um, You know, I still manage how many minutes, hours, whatever of news, television, all of that, that I ingest. But I'm able over these last few weeks and through this connection with something I feel like I can really create a relationship with has, it almost feels like it's like dialed down the frequency a little bit. Um, And it's dialed down the frequency of the anxiety, you know, not my general frequency. My general frequency, I feel like it has enriched. It's like, I feel like someone has taken um, an equalizer and worked really hard to balance everything out. And I feel like that's how things feel. And things are starting to come together for me in a different way than they did before I started working with my higher self. My point here is not that your higher self is better than your religion, or my higher self is better than your religion, or spirit guides are better, or angels are better, or one is better or worse than the other. My whole point is, if like me, you have wanted to find a connection to something and have not yet been able to, you might want to look at your higher self as an option, right? To do that, if that is something that you'd like to explore, what I recommend is of course some meditation. Make sure you've got yourself grounded. Make sure that you have your, um, you know, your energy is secured. You are letting in what you need to let in, but only what's in your highest and best. And then sit and open yourself up to your higher self and think about the fact that that this higher self knows everything about what has happened to to you thus far. Maybe what is going to happen to you in the future. Maybe, you know, it's like, okay, well, they're doing pretty well with this, that, or the other thing. So I think in the next life, we might be able to, you know, move up to this frequency. And the best way I can describe it is it feels like I have a co-pilot. And I know that I'm yammering, (laughs) but I'm just really amazed at what a shift has occurred. And I'm curious if other people have had a similar experience. Maybe you're one of those people who has had that experience within your religion. Um, maybe you're someone who feels like you can have that experience with angels or spirit guides, or maybe even, um, you know, people that you're channeling, relatives, anything along those lines. So I just wanted to share that with you. I thought it was interesting. Um, since I started to do that, there is a shift for me into a feeling of more abundance. And it's not a feeling of, you know, not related to finances, not of, you know, financial getting my bills paid and all of that. It's more this sense of richness, possibility, um, and availability of this part of myself that I can call on 
anytime I want to call on it for guidance. So what do you do to connect with whatever it is you connect with? Who do you connect with? What do you connect with? And how do you do it? I'm really curious because I think, boy, if we could crack this nut where everybody was able to identify their niche, their frequency, whatever it is that helps them connect to that feeling of empowerment and groundedness and a a knowing that everything may not always be easy, but it will be all right. And what a blessing. What a wonderful thing to have. So let me know. Let me know what's up with you. I'm really curious to see, hear all of that. How it works for you, maybe how it works for other people in your life, or what experiences you've had in trying to create this for yourself. All right. Have a fantastic week. I hope that, I hope the week is rainbow and butterflies and that all of the positivity that we're putting out there, all of the positivity that we're working to contribute is having an effect and lifting up at least a few people here and there. All right. Be well. Take care be kind, be safe, and I'll talk to you next week. Bye-bye.